welcome to UFO Mysteries, a brand new series in which we'll be attempting to answer such questions as do UFOs exist and is the truth really out there? Over the coming weeks, we'll be bringing you all the very latest news reports and sightings from around the world, as well as interviews with top researchers, scientists and celebrities. We'll also be showing and analysing some of the very latest UFO footage, and if you think you've filmed a UFO, we'll be giving you the chance to send in your videos, and each week we'll be featuring the best videos on the show and pay £300 for each one that we use. More on that later, but first, here's what's coming up in tonight's show. Tonight, we meet the man from the Ministry of Defence, our very own Fox Mulder, Nick Pope, who believes that something quite literally out of this world is flying in the skies above the UK, despite the findings of a recently released top-secret Ministry of Defence report. We'll also be meeting the Andrews family, who believe their children have been subjected to repeated alien visitations, and the music producer who witnessed a fleet of UFOs above his North London recording studio and captured the whole event on videotape. Ever since June 24, 1946, when pilot Kenneth Arnold saw a formation of nine mysterious crescent-shaped objects near Mount Rainier in Washington and described their motion as similar to that of a saucer skimming across water, the term flying saucer has become synonymous with the UFO phenomenon. Since then, literally hundreds of thousands of sightings have been reported worldwide. Yet despite this, no government has yet to publicly acknowledge UFOs may be extraterrestrial in origin. However, the Ministry of Defence recently released a declassified report entitled Unidentified Aerial Phenomena in the UK. The 400-page document, codenamed the Condyne Report, claims to explain away all sightings of UFOs as either the result of unusual weather conditions or the misidentification of conventional aircraft. I travelled to London to meet Nick Pope, who worked at the Ministry of Defence's UFO Help Desk from 1991 to 1994 to get some answers. here in central London to gauge what the public opinion is of UFOs. I think they, they probably, there is something out there, I think, I do think that there is something else out there. Do you think that the government's maybe concealing information about uh, UFOs? Yes. Do you, why do you say that? Oh, they just conceal everything, don't they? My dad said that he was just walking home one night and, um, and then he just saw this one really, really bright star in the sky and then it just shoot off in completely nowhere and he said it couldn't have been like a shooting star. Most people associate UFOs and government cover-ups primarily with the United States. The many tales of back-engineered UFOs being test-flown at the notorious top-secret Area 51 base in the Nevada desert do little to dispel these rumours. However, the United Kingdom has received its own steady flow of UFO reports since 1962 when the British UFO Research Association was established. In the past 10 years, commercial airline pilots have reported 73 UFOs. So it's no wonder that the public feel the British government knows more than it's letting on. So Nick, you worked at the Ministry of Defence's UFO desk between 1991 and 1994. Were you a sceptic when you began your tour of duty? And if so, were there any particular cases that caused you to reassess this view? When I started my tour of duty, yes, I was very much a sceptic when it came to UFOs. But I think gradually two things began to change my mind. Firstly, um, delving back into the old um, declassified uh, X-Files, as it were, looking at some of the old cases from the 50s and the 60s, some of which had involved um, UFOs tracked on radar, um, Air Force jets being scrambled and such like. But there was one particular case from 1993 that really had quite a profound effect on me. This was a large wave of sightings across the UK involving numerous police and military witnesses and most uh, dramatically of all a large triangular shaped UFO flew over the two military bases at RAF Cosford and RAF Shawbury. The Ministry of Defence's uh, bottom line is that it examines UFO sightings only up to the point where it can satisfy itself that there's no threat. Um, what they will say is that therefore we don't really investigate unless there is overt um, indication of, of some hostile uh, intent, some hostile action. Did you act as a consultant during its compilation? I actually helped uh, commission uh, the so-called uh, 
uh, Condine report. Uh, this dated back to discussions I had in 1993 with my opposite number in the Defence Intelligence staff. And we uh, placed a contract, or rather we were doing the preparatory work to place a contract uh, to really have a look at the UFO study to resolve the, um, uh, the, the issue one way or the other. Uh, the point was that we'd been investigating the phenomenon for decades with no definitive result. We wanted to nail this down once and for all. Was there anything to it or not? How significant do you regard it as a document? This is quite simply the largest document uh, ever made public by the Ministry of Defence. It's over 460 pages. It's the most highly classified uh, UFO uh, file ever released. Uh, the original classification was secret UK eyes only. So yes, this is of huge significance and it I think uh, very much underlines the MOD's commitment to open government and freedom of information. The Condine report has a number of uh, findings, some of which might said to be um, contradictory. On the one hand, it says that uh, there is no evidence that UFOs are extraterrestrial in origin. Um, then it goes on to talk about uh, possible uh, exotic atmospheric plasmas which may or may not have military applications if we could um, somehow utilise the technology. Um, and then, in a very bizarre bit of the report, it talks about the flight safety implications um, of uh, UFOs, or, or rather UAPs. It, it uses the acronym UAP, uh, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. Um, and it's got quite bizarre recommendations, like under no circumstances should pilots try to intercept a UAP. Finally, do you envisage the Freedom of Information Act facilitating the release of any new UFO documents in the near future? And what might they reveal? There is an ongoing programme to uh, declassify and release as many of the old UFO files as possible. Uh, it's a big job. The MOD's UFO project dates back to 1950. There have been over 10,000 UFO uh, sightings reported to the department. So there are many, many more UFO documents and files uh, still to be released. And there are some fantastic cases in there. So prepare to be amazed. Whether the Ministry of Defence is withholding classified information relating to UFOs remains to be seen, but it seems inevitable due to the Freedom of Information Act that one day the general public might finally be able to see for themselves as yet unreleased top secret files currently locked away in a dusty drawer. Unidentified flying objects have been seen throughout history, but recently with the advent of camcorders, more people than ever are filming videos of UFOs. We sent James Batten up to North London to meet a music producer who claims to have filmed numerous UFOs over the years, including most recently a spectacular fleet of glowing orbs above London. Most people go through their lives without ever seeing anything out of the ordinary in the sky. However, a small percentage consistently report sightings of unusual objects, while an even smaller percentage claims to have multiple UFO sightings. Record producer Kieran Jay is one such person, having logged on videotape many of his sightings. His UFO encounters began five years ago after being shown a technique to communicate with UFOs using nothing more than a handheld torch. When did you first begin to use the flashing light technique and what happened? A friend of mine who who was shown this signal with a torch, various shapes. Um, at night time I used, to, I used to use that a lot. More often than not, after doing the signal, a UFO would appear. Right. I think I'm getting a little bit more intuitive with it, rather than just going out every time it's clear. Um, you know, I might go out for, for a couple of minutes and just, just have a sense. You filmed a number of nighttime objects near your flat, the most recent being a luminous UFO. Can you tell me about that? So I went outside, um, it was a very clear sky, just had my video camera at the ready. Um, and it was just literally, it was about 10 minutes into <coughs> sky watching, just thinking about them and yeah, this rather unusual, I don't know, just for me it looked like a worm at the time, it looked like an animal. It didn't look like, you know, a, 
what we'd describe, you know, as a spacecraft, you know. It really did look like an animal. One of Kieran's most remarkable UFO encounters occurred in August 2005, whilst at work at a North London music studio. It was during a break in between recording sessions that he first noticed a large number of silver metallic orbs in the sky overhead. He began filming with his camcorder, and within a short while, the sky was literally filled to the brim with hundreds of objects. And intriguingly, some appear to line up into clusters, seemingly under intelligent control. One formation of UFOs in particular bears an uncanny resemblance to the Ursa Major star system, more commonly known as the Plough. Could this be a cryptic clue as to the UFO's planet of origin, or might there be a more prosaic explanation to these sightings? There's no doubt that Kieran's filmed an impressive collection of UFOs that even the hardened sceptic would find hard to dismiss. And with more and more people owning camera phones and cameras, the number of UFOs caught on video is set to increase. So, maybe next time you're taking a walk in the park, be sure to keep your camera to hand just in case you see something out of this world. James Batten, UFO Mysteries. Welcome back. Coming up next, we'll be meeting the Andrews family, who believe their children have been subjected to repeated alien visitation over many years. And if you've filmed anything unexplainable in the sky with your camcorder or mobile phone, we'll be giving you details of how you can send in your video to the show and be in with a chance to earn £300 if we use it. But first, alien abductions. Are they a real phenomenon or just the work of publicity seekers and charlatans? We sent Xanthi Behrman to investigate a particularly intriguing case involving a family of four that has baffled experts for over a decade. The alien abduction phenomenon is an area of ufology that is still considered too controversial to be worthy of serious investigation by many mainstream researchers. However, Thousands of sane and rational people around the world continue to report bizarre encounters with small, non-human entities, seemingly defying any rational explanation. Today, I'm here to meet Anne and Paul Andrews, whose lives and those of their children have been affected for many years by otherworldly intelligence. your earliest recollections of anything paranormal happening? I suppose looking back on it, it would have to be when Jason was born, uh, well just after he was born. Um, it was when we put him in his own room, um, in, his, in his own cot, he would be moved from his cot during the night. Um, we would hear him crying, we'd go in there and find that, um, you know, sometimes he was the other way up in the cot, sometimes he was underneath it. Um, a few times we found him under a chair, didn't we? Yeah, or behind the door. Or behind the door. He was always in the room, um, always crying, you know, whenever anything like this happened. But um, we just, we, we couldn't work out what was happening. Um, I suppose it took us, what, it wasn't until he was 12 that we actually started thinking, well, maybe there is something to this. It was really when we were watching a program on hypnosis and as it went off for the interval, um, there was this guy um, and he said, oh, um, I need to remember what happened because I was driving my lorry and there was this big flash of light and I lost two hours of time. And that's the point that Jason got up through something at the TV um, and Paul said, you know, what the hell do you think you're doing? Um, and he was just crying his eyes out, yeah. wasn't he? And he just he just said that that man on there is so stupid because um, he said he said he shouldn't want to remember. He said because I remember I remember everything. He said and I don't want to remember. 
Um, and that was the point he rushed out to the kitchen and we were just sort of sitting there thinking, what the hell's going on? I didn't know what to think. Didn't know what to think. Looked at each other yeah. and thought, what's going on? Um, and that's the point where Daniel just sort of looked at us and he said, don't you get it? You know, we were like, what? And he said, well, he said, he said, Jason's being abducted by aliens. We'd heard it before, you know, as, as I said, he'd said the same thing since he was about three. It was, it was always the same thing. You know, these, these small beings would come into his bedroom. Um, they would come up through the floor, didn't they? They'd come through the window. Um, and he said, you know, they would make him float away with them. He'd float through the wall. Um, and he always, when he was little, he always said they took him to a hospital place. And he said that he was always um, in this big room. Um, he was unable to move. Um, he could move his eyes. He could see what was going on, but he couldn't sort of move any other part of him. Truthfully, that that was the point of the book. That was why you know I felt it had to be written um, because there are just so many people where you know we were going through this and not able, like we were, to believe it. Many visitors have commented on paranormal events that have occurred while visiting. Very different and she came in here and um, she suddenly became very ill, she couldn't breathe, she kept holding her throat, she said she felt she was being strangled and um, we got her outside and she was very very white um, as soon as we got her outside the room you know she sort of felt a little bit better um, but she was quite ill for about three or four days um, and that was just by coming in here. Um, yet other people come in here and they, they sort of drink in the energy and they, they love it. Because um, we find that when, when he gives talks, um, one of the main questions from people is, um, Jason, what do you think about, you know, 2012, you know, the, the mind calendar and, you know, the end of everything? Um, and his answer is, nothing is written in stone. The earth is changing, he said it's changing now. Basically the planet is rebelling against all the things that we've done to her and he said, but you know, so he said you, you've got to remember that the planet is a living thing. Continents won't be the same. Um, he said a, a lot of people will. Um, he calls it expire, doesn't he? Mm. Um, he said a lot of people will expire. For those of you that don't, you've got to decide how you um, continue in this existence. He says so. He said no. He said 2012 is just another. Um, another blip, he said, but he said it doesn't mean the end of everything. He said it just means change. So whatever your views are on the alien abduction phenomenon, it's clear that the Andrews family have had some very real and often traumatic experiences. Whether those experiences can be attributed to extraterrestrials is open to debate. But I suspect this is one case that will continue to run and run. Santi Behrman, UFO Mysteries. Welcome to UFO News Update. Could these pictures prove that we are not alone? UFO spotter Ernie Sears believes there well may be something out there. 82-year-old Ernie from Netley Abbey in Portsmouth has photographed more than 200 unusual flying objects over the town in recent years, including this large bulky craft as well as strange humanoid-like objects that hover in clusters. The first official government website in the world to document UFO sightings has collapsed under a stampede by the public to gain access. The National Centre for Space Studies, the French equivalent of NASA, opened the website on Thursday, unveiling an archive of documents about hundreds of UFO sightings in France over the past 50 years. Such was the excitement and scramble to pick through this treasure trove that the website was overloaded and promptly crashed. The archive includes photographs, police records of interviews with witnesses and even video recordings. The mysterious appearance of an unidentified flying object over O'Hare International Airport in Chicago back in November 2006, which attracted worldwide media attention, continues to baffle experts. The Federal Aviation Administration says it must have been a weird weather phenomenon, and United Airlines denies any knowledge of the case. But though it has been several months since the incident, questions are still being raised about what exactly was seen and whether the authorities are trying to downplay it. As many as a dozen United Airlines employees swear the mysterious object they saw was real, hovering for several minutes above the United Airlines terminal and then shooting up through the clouds so powerfully that it left an eerie hole in overcast skies. That was UFO News Update. 
we've come to the part of the show where you can get involved, especially if you think you filmed a UFO with your camcorder or mobile phone. You can send in your DVD or videotape to us at the show, and if we use it, we'll pay you £300 for your trouble. But remember, only genuine videos, please. But now, let's take a look at this week's viewers' UFO videos. Well, that just about wraps up this week's show and we hope you've enjoyed it. So goodbye until next time and remember, keep watching the skies.